Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Ron, aka Ron the Artist, coming to you live, and welcome to Ron's Recap. I'm here today to recap and review the TV show BMF, aka Black Mafia Family, season two, episode one, the season premiere, titled Family Dinner. Definitely was an intriguing dinner. Definitely was an intriguing dinner. Like, if you watch season one, you know that um, this show is really, like, it's the one that'll have you on the edge of your seats. Just interesting all, the, all across the board, and it, it, it's engaging with its viewers. So I, I was anxious to see how it came out, you know, for this season. And, again, cliffhangers. Love it. Okay, so let's get into it. The episode started with, you know, a feast of the sort starting in the year of 2005 with, um, I guess, more of a present Terry. Heavier, you know. It was a celebration at this feast, you know, until the place was invaded by the, the SWAT team, the feds. You know, as soon as they were making a toast to 263, boom, door was kicked down and Terry and the entire team was taken under by the SWAT team. And that same officer who's been on his ass, Bryant, for however long, was, was the one to really still be on it. Okay, so then, that was weird a little bit. I, don't, I wouldn't say necessarily weird, but different, because that took place in 2005, and then shortly after, it rewinded back to the 1980s. Took, took back, it rewinded back to the 1980s to Meech in Vegas. And he was doing an exchange, of course, doing some type of, you know, business. And, you know, he was working on his next play. And he had, and he, and he had a guy, you know, talking to him, giving him game on who's who and what's what and what they do in the midst of this Vegas casino. And in the midst of him also getting his product. Next thing, you know, you know, after he got all the details and the intel, he was on the way back to Detroit. One way on a Greyhound bus. Transaction done. He got game on Vegas and what it looked like. And he also got like a little point or like a little direction for him to like go to Atlanta. So that was his next move. Clearly he left Vegas knowing his next move was to take over Atlanta or to hit the States. He was ready to get outside of Detroit. I'm assuming that definitely was like the reason why he was in Vegas, let alone that was handed to him to come to Atlanta. He was ready for the big, big money. He tired of that petty ass Detroit money. So he's like, all right, let's get it. Let's go. Let's go time. I see it. I feel it. You know, so ultimately it was a mission accomplished, you know, and like I said, it seems like St. Meach was ready for whatever at that point, ready to take over the States. Next up was Terry, you know, Terry taking his driver's license test. Meanwhile, talking and getting caught. Talking and getting caught. Talking during the test. Like, that's like test taking one on one. Talking during the test. And to his neighbor, which is technically cheating. You know, he got caught. The test was taken from him. And he was shitty about it. But apparently, spoiler alert, he quote unquote still passed. You know, next up was, you know, Terry and Meech's mom, Mrs. Flannery. You know, sitting at the dinner table with her husband. And they were at a restaurant in the morning time. And it appeared that they were, you know, both, you know, getting ready for work or about to head to work. This was breakfast before work. And she had on a Wendy's outfit, you know, working at Wendy's. And he had on a GM, General Motors here. Detroit all day. Michigan. If you know, you know. <laughs> General Motors on the shirt. And, you know, I guess she was just sitting there with him, but idolizing a married couple from afar and just saying, like, that should have been us. Automatically hitting, like, that they're unhappy and that they're not where they want to be or it should be, you know, mentally or in their marriage, physically, emotionally, whatever. And, again, and they were kind of older, too. The, cult, the, the couple kind of looked a little older as well. I don't know, but she definitely, she was, like, that should be us. Hair, happily married doing our thing and they didn't have any kids with them either i want to say that to that couple that they were that she was idolizing 
You know, so I, again, it, it carried on to her and her husband, you know, being unhappy. All they really have a, to talk about is kids, money, and bills. Like, that's all they have in common at this point. And it's unfortunate because the conversation between her and her husband at that point just kind of, it kind of went to a space where he was like, let's talk about something else. And she was like, what else do we have to talk about? And that's unfortunate. Like, you know, you guys are married in in love or once upon a time were in love. Like, and you guys are a couple. You guys should be definitely having more things to talk about than kids and marriage and bills. Oh, I'm sorry. Kids, bills, and money. Like, talk about vacation. Talk about friends, other family members. Like, something. You know, give, it gives, you know, your, your marriage hope. So I think. Not, not that I've ever been married, but that's the way I, I, I feel it would go. Some type of flair to your marriage. Like, you know, and that, that, that really kind of hit me a little bit. Because I'm like, damn, I don't ever want to end up like that. Where I'm just like, I should have, could have, would have. Had I took one step different. Anyways. Next scene. The police meeting up about the 50, the 50 boys. The whole SWAT team meeting. Like, the feds is on the top. And, you know, discussing their history and with the sus suspected murders and deaths from Cato and to the detective, which Cato killed the detective. But they were just on their tops, ready, you know, to take them down. The meeting was concluded with, you know, them zoning in on the 50 boys and assigning a new partner to Detective Bryant, which was a transfer detective, Detective Jen. That Brian wasn't too happy about having. He didn't care for her or he didn't know where she came from and thought she was new and somebody that didn't have experience and he didn't really want to babysit, so he said. Or he really just don't want nobody in on his snake ass and just to know and watch his moves because he's a snake. Just saying. You know, so his boss pretty much talked about that point, like you either do this or you don't like you take this partner to get back in the game or you still sit on the bench and clearly he's probably going to get back on the bench i mean he's wanting to get off the bench so he had all the choice but to take you know this partner so after that the next scene was at a basketball game that terry and his homie you know they were at they were at you know where he was terry mesmerized by this chick from afar and meanwhile, Meech and B. Mickey were also at the doggone game, but they were sitting at a in the bleachers, like on the opposite level, crowd watching, and watching Terry from afar, watching him idolize somebody, a chick that's married that they knew and knew that didn't belong to Terry and all of that. And they were also plotting on their next play in general. So they were just like, fuck this, fuck Terry, we on some new shit. Terry don't fuck me over. Let's move on. Let's go. So when the game got out, Terry and his boy, you know, when they were walking with a young girl that was an electrical, electrical engineer who also worked on cars, which, you know, Terry has that in common at this point, working on cars and wanting to buy cars and drive cars, whatever, career change. And, um, but the combo was cut short. When Meech and B. Mickey passed, you know, Meech dabbed up to his homie, but did not dab up, you know, Terry. You know, and I guess Meech was still mad at Terry about something more like, you know, betraying him and messing over the plug or whatever. And next thing you know, Meech and B. Mickey kept walking up the street. Terry's attention was then caught by the girl again that was in the game. And him and his homeboy went off they went, you know, to try to make a move, I'm assuming. You know, as Meech and B. Mickey was walking up the sidewalk, they end up witnessing somebody get shot in the head, bow, for 20 G's that they did not pay up to their owner. Dude was like, you owe me 20 G's. He got in his face like, I ain't giving you shit. Broad daylight in front of a doggone school basketball game and everything. Just crazy. Broad daylight. And B. Mickey ran in the midst of that. Meech stood there just maybe idolized by it or just kind of stunned a little bit or I don't know, but he just stood there watching like that boy is 
gone. Like, at this point, maybe, like, me just all of, like, probably 19, I'm assuming. Like, it appears, like, maybe 19, 18, 19, maybe 20 years old at this point. And he's been exposed to so much that wasn't even in his household growing up. Just the streets consumed him, and now he's just so deep in where he witnessing murders and moving all kind of dope and seeing so much money and he know and seeing a lot and only at the, the young age he's definitely got to be still like a teenager at least 19 at this point and i just found that so crazy so 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 crazy so in the midst of that you know got to the dude was shot everybody sped off and running and da 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 all of a sudden the guy that killed the guy in the head, he sped up, but he sped by in a car to pick up Meech, drove off while Terry watched, and Terry knew, like, damn, this, this is not good. Whatever you into, I want no parts. This is crazy. The next scene was at, you know, Terry's parents' house, you know, Terry and Meech's house, the Flannery's house, you know, with the mother of his child, and, you know, the mother of his child actually being there with his parents and sister. I guess she came back in town that morning because you remember last season she left because of them getting in, you know, the drug game and it was becoming too much. So she left with the child, but apparently she's back. And in the midst of that conversation of him, you know, bonding with his child, you know, Terry's dad asked him about passing his driver's test and he claimed he did, but I wasn't too convinced at the time because the test got taken away from him, you know, too soon before he was done with it. But apparently he still passed according to him. But um, he passed and whatever, left his dad in excitement and ready to say, you know, oh, we're going to do this and that. We're our business. We're going to get another car. We're going to make another move, another play and da, da 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 And boom, like, all right. Just seems like at that point, like, he was the golden child, as I kind of analyzed. He was the golden child because the love and attention that he get, Terry, Meech never really got. As I, I'm observing, we, Meech never really got, like, if they just poured some of that love into Meech, Meech wouldn't be so far gone in the streets as he is right now. That's deep, you know, real deep, like, real deep, <laughs> real, real deep as I think about it, you know. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Shortly after that moment, you know, his mother asked, has he talked to his brother, Meech? And he lied. As he saw him earlier that day at the doggone game, he lied about that. Meanwhile, not wanting to give the baby back to the mother of his child for the moment. Like, oh, you've been going with him long enough. I'm not giving it back to you. And da 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 da, -da and whatever. He went in the kitchen with the baby. Next scene went back to Brian. Went back to Brian in the car and Detective Jen. You know, they were getting acquainted with each other, learning about each other's background until they both rode past B. Mickey who was walking down the street or walking on the sidewalk eating a bag of chips which distracted Detective Bryant and instantly Detective Jen noticed but he didn't say anything he just let it ride even though he knew that they were they were on a mission to be sought be Mickey and the whole crew he just let it ride and just kept going now that caught me off guard because I'm like if you were just sent on a mission to get these dudes and you see one person that's a somewhat of a key member in the doggone group that you want, why are you still, why, why well, who are you protecting? Why are you, why did you let B. Mickey go? What, what was up? But I also remember the, la the end of last season, B. Mickey was being interrogated by him and Brian has some intel on him. So maybe that had played a part of it at that moment, I thought to myself. But he claimed he was okay after Jen, you know, asked about him, you know, like, what's up? Like, why'd you get quiet? And she peeped that he saw somebody, you know, eating chips in the mirror. And he just claimed he was okay and the conversation ended. But I, I thought, too, like, Detective Jen definitely probably thought something was up. But next up, you know, back to the guy who murdered this dude. I have no idea what his name was. I don't know if Meech said his name, like, once and it just was quiet like but the guy who murdered the dude in the doggone parking lot for the 20k meach was with him 
and his crew and at some sort of restaurant slash bar where he sat with a Spanish man who he wasn't too pleased by. And he quickly dismissed him and was disrespectful to him and kind of disrespectful to damn near everybody around him. Kind of, he's that guy where he's boss in charge and everybody bowed on to him or else. And crazy, 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 crazy. And he ended up dismissing the Spanish dude and had a guy, you know, interpreting to this man in Spanish. He was like, get the fuck on, like. Asshole, whatever I do, I protect you and your family, and you still aren't giving me enough. And crazy, crazy, crazy. Like this man clearly is a little off. And Meech, I mean, close to it. You know, I don't know what. I guess honestly, I don't know what Meech's mo is like at this point because Meech just had a few opportunities to just back out and just do right, but instead, like I don't know if it's just the life the money and the perks and you know just the adrenaline of being in the streets that really kept him going after more and more and more because at that moment i guess he didn't have a plug the whole reason of him trying to get with this dude is to get a plug you know a drug plug and like this dude clearly is not a nice person at all so, you know, just putting himself in further danger, you know. So after the Spanish dude was dismissed, he invited Meech closer to him to chop it up with him and, you know, turn in the funds and then Meech had for him or whatever. Meech had, a, you know, a present for him, probably an initiation or just to see what was up, you know, to discuss a big arrangement or an arrangement in general, just to be the plug for him, his supply. But this guy, really, he wasn't really trying to hear it. And suddenly the convo was interrupted by Big, Big L's presence. Now, if you, if you remember Big L from season one, Big L was the, their plug. With him, Terry and Meech's plug via Terry. She only wanted to do business with Terry. But if Meech hopped on the business with Terry, that was she was okay with that. But she only wanted to do business with Terry. Because Meech, again, is reckless, as I just keep saying. Big L... She came through there and, you know, old boy introduced her, but little did he know, Meech already knew her. And she let it be known, like, she already knew Meech and that he was great at what he does. She said, he's a good salesman. I just wasn't sold on him. I was like, damn, just kind of humbled you in front of this guy who you trying to get on his good graces. You know, and... That didn't look too good in the guy's eyes, and Meech, you know, played it off and didn't quite get the results he wanted. The dude departed and kind of left Meech like, damn, what am I going to do now? Next scene, you know, Terry and Meech's parents in the bed sleeping. Charles, you know, Mr. Flannery, you know, trying to have an intimate moment with Lucille, Mrs. Flannery, but it didn't really go anywhere. Again, like, intimacy and just romance and love in their marriage is just not really there. You know, we tried to have an intimate moment an intimate moment with her. She's like, no, please, I got three hours just to get up and you know, it just seemed like more of a strain on their marriage. She turned him down and he wasn't feeling it. So the next scene went back to De Detective Bryant. And this time we got to see, you know, we don't really get to see much of Detective Ryan's personal life and maybe the writers of BMF took note of that because we got to see it a little bit of this moment we got to see a little bit of this moment um he was in his home where it seemed like trouble was in paradise with the sun it seemed like trouble was in paradise with the sun and it seemed like he didn't really give his son much freedom to express himself or just be him the boy seemed super talented into comics and superheroes, and he told him that he's too young for that, or too old for that. He's too old for that. He told him he's too old for that. Um, that he's in high school, these are too immature, these are good, but immature, and that's unfortunate. Just shoot down his dreams, because you can never be too old for cartoons. He's an artist. He creates. And he kind of shot it down, and he this, the boy was like, you know, mom would have never had an issue with me you know, never would have had an issue with me um, 
cart doing my cartoons, and he said, "Yeah, that's the problem. She gave all rights to me, so what she says doesn't matter anymore." And I shot him down or whatever. Um, I guess in the midst of that, he was on before at that moment. Happy he was making a, a little weird ass pop tart peanut butter jelly, peanut butter sandwich, and De Detective Brian took it from him and ate it, and it was horrible and. I don't know, I guess it just seems like there's a strain on his relationship too, like his personal life, you know. Like there's a little bit of a strain on his personal life with his son. And with the boy's mother, you know, not being present. But I will say the scene ended with him, like, you know, lifting his son up, you know, letting him know, like, you know, you are the detectives. I'm the toughest guy in the city. You're the detective son. Those kids are still bullying you in school. Like, you are a hero, regardless of the hero you wearing on your shirt and wanting to wear underneath your shirt. You know, I'll let you wear it, but comics gotta go. And that was super unfortunate. Like, kind of felt that moment. Kind of felt that moment, for sure, because it seems like this boy doesn't really have much direction on where he want to go in life. Like, it's all being shunned. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. And on top of that, he's getting bullied at school. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more that's going to happen with that storyline, man. With Brian's personal family. Like, he's so invested and in, involved with the streets and trying to take down the streets and meet that your personal life lacks. And you're not even catering to that effectively. Like, make that make sense. You're not even catering to your son, the one person that seems like in your life that really, that, you know, has some sentimental value to you that you you don't even give much room to express and be themselves. And I get this funky feeling that that, that might be something. And if, like, and if that, that has to be something. Why else would we get this much information of his personal life in this season? I will put money on that. Come back to this comment or you see that I've really I've said this in a later vlog, like note that hey, Ron said this. Just saying. All right, so after that scene ended, it went the scene went to be Mickey at a record store with his homies, you know, some sort of record store they spot. And with the crew, and they're just chilling, you know, until some people of the opposite crew, the I think 12th Street, came in. In terrain on a parade or whatever, and you know, it was led by this little happy guy who started a fight with one of the group members, and it was a brawl that broke out. As the two people tussled, you know, one from Meech's side or me, Mickey's people's team, the other from 12th Street. As this big dude fighting this little old dude, you know, as they tussled, the opposite crew, the 12th Street, some people tried to jump in until B. Mickey pulled out the gun and the, the leader leader of 12th Street pulled out his gun, like, don't even try it. And the fight continued, but nobody else jumped in, though. But the big guy started to get a little hold, um, get a, get, I guess, get the, the advantage of the fight at that point as they were on the ground. But all of that came to a halt when Meech entered into the break, to, into, all of that came to a halt when Meech came in, when Meech came in to break it up. He was like, yo, they came in our spot, da 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 And Meech was like, I invited him here. You know, he invited him here to, you know, join their resources. Because clearly Meech didn't have a plug. So he like, let's see about their plug. You know, but they knew. They knew that Meech didn't have word on the street. Meech didn't have a plug. He didn't have much to offer. So you attempted to, you were, you were attempting to sell these whoop tickets. It's not going to work. Trying to sell these whoop tickets, not going to work. We hear you don't have a plug. You talking about joining our resources and you ain't even got much to give. You are your team. So what is it really hitting on? That's the MO they was on and they end up leaving after that. Let it be known like this ain't that. And they end up leaving after that. You know, once they were going to be Mickey asking like, why didn't you tell them? What do you have planned on? What do we got going on? He responded with, you know, that they only going up to K-9 and that the crew were only, you know, only fish in the pond. Or so maybe that is the guy's name. The guy that he had the meeting with, K-9. That gotta be K-9. I'm gonna um, Google that. But K-9, but he was like, he was using them to get to K-9. Maybe their product 
for the sake of K9, you may be trying to oppress K9 or whatever the case may be. I don't know. But he said they were only fish in the pond. And that they gotta, you know, have their shit tight in order to impress K9 and to make their next play, whatever else Nietzsche had planned. And I'm like, all right, moving on. Next scene, Meech pulled up at his mom at the Wendy's drive thru as she worked. And she was thrilled to see him. She was thrilled to see him. She probably don't talk to him often. They don't get to see him often in the streets. All of that. Then the husband hates Meech at this point. Like, you know, she was thrilled to see him. They briefly caught up on things about the sister and about Terry getting his driver's license and him throwing a little party or a little celebration for Terry. And she wanted Meech to be there on Sunday for it. But he knew his dad wouldn't have liked that. He then offered her money, like $100, but she didn't want that. She didn't want to take it. She didn't want the drug money, even though they needed the money. That's crazy, because you and your husband are arguing about money, 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 money and problems. That's becoming a problem in your marriage, even though you need the money. You don't want it because it's dirty money. And it wasn't even a whole lot of money. But I know that $100 at least would have gave, you know, this their daughter the lunch money, which they was a problem that they talked about at that breakfast. You know, that's that's unfortunate, but she did want it. And um, she gave him free food at Wendy's, gave him the food and, you know, told him to be at the party on Sunday and off he went. It's a cute little moment. Like, you know, at least his mama still love him. His mama still love him. He know that and he know where to find her and where to see her. And that was nice. That was a nice little moment. Because that's probably, honestly, the only love he get. If he ain't getting it from Terry, he's not getting it from his dad, not really getting it from his sister like that because he probably can't even see her, or his baby moms. Who is Meech getting affection from? Because the streets ain't giving his ass no affection, I know. I guess Meech is cold. As I really think about it, he don't really have a whole lot of good stuff going on in his life or in his like background. And honestly, it's all his fault because he had opportunities for this and he fucked them all up. Just for the streets that don't give a fuck about you. Okay. So once that scene ended, the next scene was Terry making, you know, his way to approach that woman again. But this time, you know, the woman he saw at the game. But this time, she was at her job at this insurance, this family insurance place. And he was supposed to be there to handle business, but he was so starstruck and making his way and making passes, and she wasn't really for it. But she's like, dude, you wasted my time. I get paid off commission, and bring me customers. Bring me customers, bring me customers, bring me customers. And... You know, he left her with he left her with his number. And she's like, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right, bring me customers. Bye bye. Good day. Off you go. And before you know it, he was daydreaming about her. And the next little mini scene, what a next little cut. Daydreaming about her to the point where he was having sex with his baby mom and imagining him having sex with her. Crazy. You know. She said, I guess the baby mom suddenly wanted to get back with him. And he hesitated, but he agreed to start over with her and back at it, they went. Literally at it, you know. <laughs> okay, so the next scene. The next scene, the next scene. You know, they went back to the detective. It, the next scene went back to the detectives, Brian and Jen, in the car, still connecting, trying to get to know one another. Until they ran across B. Mickey and another member of the group. And boom. It's like, oh, what do you know? Members of the 50 Boys. Now, that threw me off, too, because I'm like, that threw me off, too, because I'm like, okay, um, why did you not give me Mickey when you saw him by himself? But now you want to give me Mickey that he's with somebody else and they have a bag, a duffel bag. Hmm. So, I'm like, okay, um, I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Um, so they stopped the car. Brian got out the car. Chase B. Mickey. And Jen, you know, 
chased the other guy. Mind you, this other guy was the one that got into the fight at the um at the um little record store or whatever. He got into the fight at the little record store or whatever. And um he went they both went running in through the neighborhood and he's the one that had to, to exchange the bag or whatever. She, Jen, you know, sped up to him in the car. Eventually she caught up to him. Just when he thought he was safe and lit a cigarette and boom, she hit him with her car, knocking on his tooth and everything. Which was hilarious. That was where knocking out his tooth, and he's like, "Oh, you knocked out my tooth." <laughs> Mind you, he also had that bag full of cash, maybe a little dope in it. And Bryant, meanwhile, Bryant, he let B. Mickey go. He made it seem like he ran after him, and he did run after him for a second, but he stopped running after B. Mickey. And I was just like, "Weird again. What's up?" But. You know, when he caught back up to Jen, he con congratulated her on catching, you know, the other 50 boy in the bag. So that was a win for her. Then the scene went back to Terry, you know, going back to that insurance office to go see that woman again, who's playing, who's played by Lala Anthony. Um, This time he was bearing gifts, flowers. She broke the news about her being married and... He still flirted with her. And he eventually caught the hint and left. Even though she, you know, was married. And the next scene went back to B. Mickey. B. Mickey was filling in Meech about this, you know, chase gone wrong. You know, them getting caught by Bryant. And that old boy got caught. And they also got the stash. They got took, but skipped the stash. Because... At least, you know, B. Mickey lived to talk about it, that he didn't get caught. And he assured him that, you know, the dude that got caught is not going to talk. He's not going to talk, but that, that stash gone. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Just kind of disposed him, like, you know, he's not going to talk. He good, but y'all ain't going to try to do nothing for him, try to defend him, like, try to get him out. Just off to prison he go. Crazy, 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 crazy. But in spite of the, the Meech, in spite of the disappointment that Meech had about the, you know, the matter of, you know, the, the stash getting took it, taken, a light bulb hit him. You know, a light bulb hit him where it dawned on him that, I'm assuming, I'm going to call him K-9. That got to be that dude name. Where he had to, you know, it dawned on him that what K-9 meant about having, you know, connections. Like, he, K-9 dropped some gems on him. Like, you know, it ain't all about money. It ain't all about drugs. You know, this game is sometimes about Solid, solid, loyal connections, and that's the way you're gonna have to win him over versus trying to impress him with money. So, he then had that brilliant plan, and that's how he was gonna offer himself, you know, some sort of connection with him. And before you know it, Meech made his way to him, made his way to him in the next scene, just in time for dinner, which was steak by a chef, made by K9 Chef. While he was watching the game, which led a little opening moment for him to bond, you know, to get to know one each other. And the entryway was to, like, also, like, to talk about, like, their brothers. He said he had a brother that was in the game that didn't want to be in the game anymore because he wanted honest living. K-9 said he had a um, brother who also played in the league who didn't want to be in the game no more. So that was Meech's moment. And eventually Meech was like, yo, this is why we got to... Get this money together because I got whoop, 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 whoop going on. It was like 10 bricks, which at that point, K9 was sold. He was like, all right, I'll give you 10 bricks, but if you want 10, I'll give you 20. Meach agreed to it. He was like, Meach had, Meach talked a big game. He was like, um, he had said to this man, like, you know, I'm going to make you so much money to the point where I'm mean, going to, you going to have a house. In every state in the doggone nation. Because he said he had a, houses in Detroit, Florida, and L.A., I think. And Kelly, 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 Florida, and Detroit. But he's like, yo, don't, care, don't, don't write a check you can't cash now. Because that's a lot of money and a lot of dope you're talking about moving. But he agreed to the 20, to the 20 breaks. Suddenly afterwards, it was gift-giving time. K-9, you know, gave people watches, his team watches, you know, 
but he gave me a special gift, a bigger gift, which was lips, the actual lips, cut from Big L's face. And it had blood on it. Like, what the fuck? He gave it in a wrapped up box. A gift of her lips. And he said, you know, she talked too much. She talked too much about, you know, when she told him about Meech. And Meech thankled, awkwardly thanked him. Like, Meech was weirded out by that a little bit. But, again, Meech has been exposed to so much to this point where he pretty much would do and say anything to get what he wants at this point. Like, it's become obvious that he will say and do anything that he wants to get what he wants. He will say and do anything to get what he wants. And that's the problem. That's the problem. That's what's got him into that madness is the fact that you will say and do anything to get this money and be in these streets that don't give a flying fluke about you. These are people you don't know. And you see these people are murderers, like bad murderers, big time murderers. And you still want to get into it. Still want to get into it, getting further and further. And then you want to involve your entire family and your brother in it, which is, I don't understand why. Why, 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 why? Okay, so, you know, he awkwardly thanked him. And again, I literally wrote, already in too deep, dude. You already in too deep. You done made, you are just attempting to try to make a connection to this man. While Big L was in the midst. She let it be known about you that she liked it, you, but not really. And he cut her mouth and lips off just for that. And granted you her lips as a gift. Cold, cold hearted. You know, um, after that moment, that was his moment to, you know, proceed to tell Beach that either you have my money on time or I'm going to kill you, your brother, and them two other guys you be with. And it then said, finish your steak. Enjoy your steak. <sighs> Meech. You bit off a little bit more than you can chew. Well, maybe, maybe it's not more than you can chew, but you you now don't really sign to deal with the devil. Ooh, wait, that's crazy. You don't sign to deal with the devil, and now you... What? Crazy. All for some drugs and money. So, after that, pretty much the next scene was Terry going to, you know, pick up Meech in the car service. I don't know if that was planned or if he called or whatever, but he picked up Meech with his car service. Apparently, Meech had paid for him just to really ruffle his feathers and just to see how much he's making and try to get him back on board. And Terry opposed to it. He, he turned it down and he said he only he really want an honest living. He's not trying to be back in that game. And even though he told him that he got a new plug and he with it and dot, dot, dot. And he still was not for it. He was not for it. He was not for it. Terry was not for him. So, you know, Terry told him, like, all right, cool. Bet. Here's your stop right here. We dropped him off at a liquor store. And we each got out of the car abruptly and threw money at him and called him broke. Like, here. Keep the change, broke ass, and threw all kinds of money at him. I hope Terry did something right with the money now. <laughs> give it to your parents something. No, he can't give it to them. He can't give that money to them because they already too stubborn just to take $100. So they definitely ain't going to take that money just randomly like that. But they need that money. That's crazy. Like, you know, they say all money ain't good money. But when you need money, just to survive and just to contribute to your happiness, and somebody's just giving it to you, even though it's not good money, but it's being granted to you, and you're not doing anything bad for the money, but you know something's bad happening with the money, just take the money and go. Take the money and go. Take the money and go. You, especially when... Your marriage is at stake. Your home is at stake. Your family is at stake. 
just that hundred dollars that he had offered his mom earlier that day would have did justice like would have helped him out a little bit but she didn't want to take it but again moving on okay so the next scene was the actual dinner party on sunday at the flannery's house you know when mrs flannery hosting and entertaining her guests which her name was mrs maple shortly afterwards nicole and terry's baby mom joined setting up the table and just like old school parents miss flannery was like um oh, you, you you need glasses speak to miss speak to miss maple and you know she spoke to her like hey how you doing and she continued to set the table and Nicole was had a lip gloss as her mom clocked or peeped. Like, you know, what's going on? And she also, um, before that moment, she, asked, she was asked to get another chair for Meech or whatever. And that threw her dad off as he was playing the guitar. Like, what? You invited Meech? Like, what? Stop playing the, playing the guitar. And in the midst of that moment, him coming in, that's when she was asked about the lip gloss. And... The um the baby mom told her it was lip gloss. Terry's baby mom told her it was lip gloss, but she told her daughter that you're too young for that. Nicole, she told Nicole that you're Miss Flannery told Nicole that you're too young for the lip gloss, and Nicole got smart like, oh, but y'all like me, da 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 da. She said, what girl? Miss Flannery was like, what girl? You're always talking back and ran up and smacked fire from her like in front of the guests, her dad. Everybody, and I was just like, yikes, 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 and told her to take off the gloss, so she wiped it off, and Mr. Flannery, you know, he enforced it, and said, get to the table. The next scene was at the hospital. It was at a hospital scene, and this one was throwing me off, because I'm like, okay, who is in a hospital? Where is we going with this? And Detective Bryant took Detective Jen to check out and check on Lamar, who was supposedly dead, no longer in existence, but he was in there in the hospital on life support, hyperventilating. Well, I wouldn't say he was hyperventilating. He was on a hyperventilator. He was on life support, you know, with the oxygen machine. Bomb drop. I know good and well, everybody and their mama did not expect that to happen. Did not expect that to happen. Did not expect that to happen. So Jen was like, yo, this is Lamar. He's supposed to be dead, but I guess he's under cover because Detective Ryan need him to talk. So they got him on life support until further notice. Got him on life support, life support until further notice. So um, at that point, um, the next scene was back at the dinner table. Back at the dinner table, Terry came home to give flowers to his baby mom. The same flowers that he tried to give that woman at that doggone insurance building. Foul. Um, gave her the flowers. She was happy about it. The dinner was ready to go. Mrs. Flittery asked Nicole, you know, to say grace. And she got smart again. Like, oh, I'm not, I thought I wasn't allowed to speak. Just got slapped and got smart again. But Terry agreed to say it, say grace instead and to include meet in a prayer as the mom instructed. You know, Mr. Flannery was then like, oh, I thought Meech was coming. And I guess he didn't show. And me someone was like, mm. Seeming thrilled about it or intrigued or like, I knew it. Disappointment, as usual. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. So... Terry said the prayer, it happened, good prayer, it left. Next scene, Meech giving a speech to the 50 boys, or no longer the 50 boys, giving a, to 12th Street and the 50 boys, saying that they're no longer 12th Street and 50 boys. We're going to join, we got 20K, we got, you know, we got, we got these 10, 20 bricks, we need to get to the streets, and we are no longer 12th Street, we're no longer 50 boys, we are now BMF, Black Mafia Family. Let's get it. Let's go. And he had a nice little feast on the table with a nice little champagne bottle. And I know that well again, that boy was not old enough to drink. Like, he gotta be like about 19 years old at that point. But, he had a nice little feast, you know, uniting everyone ready to take over the nation. And that's what he said. Like, we no longer about to do this shit in Atlanta. I'm sorry, he said. We no longer about to do this shit in Detroit. We're gonna take this shit over. 
We go into Atlanta. So we taking this shit to the nation. We going and we doing it. We doing it. Let's do it. And the twenty keys to start it with. Yeah, the twenty keys to start it with. So the next scene went back to the Flannery's house. Mrs. Flannery talking to Terry's baby mom in the kitchen. You know, congratulating her on them, you know, working out or getting back together, whatever the case may be. And that Mrs. Flannery idea with Terry Jr. worked. Like, huh? What, what? What? And Terry heard it. He was trapped. Now he heard it and question, instantly questioned her about it. Like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Mrs. Flannery tried to play it off. Like, I know you're not eavesdropping. And it was a plan to keep him out of the streets. He was trapped with his baby to keep him out of the streets. And and also, Mr. Flannery, when that argument was taking place, Mr. Flannery jumped in like, oh, yeah, chill out. You was going to get out of the streets. Yeah, I knew about it. Foul. They manipulated him to the fullest. Like, he was honestly... Yeah, I guess he was happy amongst his brother at one point, but it was the family life or the family situation that is what was pulling him away from his brother or the streets and all of that, you know, and that's what had him conflicted. That's what had him, had him conflicted. And now he realized that all of that was just manipulation by his parents. And that's just foul, 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 foul. So the scene then, the next scene went back to Meech. Him talking about be Mickey on a solo level or like a personal level, you know, um, about trust and being his right hand. But something didn't seem right with be Mickey as he spoke. Like the energy was off. You know, Meech caught on to it, and be Mickey was like, "Yo, you know, I, I I'm happy that you you know you value me and you trust me." Da 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 da. But it's just my mom's. She's still in the hospital or whatever. I'm taking care of her. And he was like, you know, Meech was like, well, how's she doing? That was my mom's too, but it still seemed like something else was a part of the story again. And um, I thought like, okay, that got to be tied to, that got to be tied to at that moment. That has to be tied to like Brian. Again, because Brian let him go like twice. And on top of that, we did the season two, like concluded with B. Mickey in his presence, like interrogating him. And there's no sign of that right now. So, be Mickey. What's really going on? Um, after that, you know, conversation ended with him leaving. And again, like I said, I was left thinking like, okay, be Mickey is up, something, is up to something. He got something up his sleeve. Um, the next scene was like Terry on the beach or like on the pier. You know, just thinking alone by himself. And it was like a narration of like the current, the current Terry, you know, talking like, you know, I'm alone. He really didn't have anybody in that moment, even though he thought he had people. And it also went to say that old B. Mickey was also alone and really didn't have people like he thought he did. And that scene went to B. Mickey going into his place, to his house, where Bryant, Detective Bryant, was waiting on him. To get the scoop on Meech. Was digging through his things and everything. You know. You Mickey told him. You know. What he knew. Which wasn't much. And Brian wasn't satisfied with that. So he then blackmailed him. And you know. Was like. Oh. You were in. You. You. You took out Kato. And you loved her. You're beloved. And you also took out. You took out J-Mo. I got your gun. Your first gun. And he made him take. Put down the second gun. And grab that. And he was like. Dude. I could really take you out. You took out Kato and J Mo, and I got both guns from it. Like, I'm not satisfied with what you told me. Give me more information or else. Give me more information or else. Like, blackmailing him all the way. And being, again, mind you, being Meech, think that B. Mickey is his most trusted soldier. Right hand. And. The scene concluded with like him like, damn, what am I gonna do? Cause B Mickey is in a tight spot. Tight, 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 tight spot. And if Meech catch hold of any of that, it's over. In the final scene, 
went back to the hospital with Lamar on the hospital bed. Coming back to life completely. Like he was already on life support. You know, the beep, beep, beep started to increase his heart rate and breathing started to increase and eyes opened and came back to life. And the episode concluded. Oh, shucks. And the whole reason that Brian had that man on life support so that he can get him to snitch on Meech or whatever the case may be. Or whatever the case may be. I don't know what is about to happen with this man at this point. If Lamar come back to life and start snitching. Which, I, honestly, I don't think he going to do that. He too crazy. And he know the street code. He was a, but he by the, by the street code. So I don't know if he going to do that. But I do know that he is wicked. And a snake. And he can't be trusted. Ryan can't even trust him. But I would like to see what, M, what MO he's going to come on. He going to come with. Because that shit was crazy. That entire Lamar character is crazy. And now he back to life. So that was like a cliffhanger. And... I can't wait to see what happens next week, y'all. Next week it is. Season 2. Episode 2. BMF. I will see y'all then. Peace.